The purpose of this video is to clarify the concepts of reliability and validity, two factors that influence data quality in quantitative research studies. Let's imagine that you're giving a big dinner party for all your friends, and you figure that you'll just make up some recipes off the top of your head. You'll change some recipes that you found in an old cookbook. You pop the food in your 14-year-old oven. The result? The food's terrible. It tastes really odd. Some things are overcooked and some things are undercooked. What went wrong? And what does this have to do with nursing research? Researchers can get the same nasty results at the end of their study if they're not careful. If a researcher uses tools that have not been well tested, like those recipes, or if the instruments are not accurate, that oven is obviously not working, then they may not get the results they expected. The results might be terribly wrong. And it might not be anything to do with the quality of the intervention or the theory that they're testing. They may have ended up with poor quality or even wrong results because of problems with the reliability and validity of the instruments that they used for measurement. How do researchers prevent this problem? They do a lot of work before the study starts. Here's an example. Let's say that researchers are interested in studying patient satisfaction with telehome care. That's when patients receive video-based home care instead of face-to-face -face visit from the nurse. They look for an existing patient satisfaction survey, but they can't find one related to telehome care, so they decide to create one. The first step that they take to make sure that the telehome care satisfaction survey they are developing really taps into things that are important regarding telehome care. They have to do a couple of things. They have to make sure it's a telehome care satisfaction survey and not, let's say, a computer satisfaction survey or a regular home care satisfaction survey. They have to make sure the survey really measures what it's supposed to measure, telehome care satisfaction. And this quality is called validity. To enhance the validity of the survey items, the researchers read the literature on telehome care carefully and they identify things that are important to patients on telehome care, such as being able to see and hear the nurse properly during a video visit, being able to learn the equipment easily and quickly, and having equipment that's easy to operate. Once the survey has been developed, the researchers send it to telehome care experts and ask them to check the survey. They ask, have we missed anything important related to telehome care satisfaction? Is there something on the survey that's not appropriate and we should be removing? Does the literature review, doing the literature review and asking experts to contribute to the survey or review a survey are some ways of increasing the likelihood that the items on the survey really are telehome care satisfaction items? There are other things that can be done, but these are the most common activities that will enhance the validity that we see in nursing literature. Okay, well now let's say that the researchers believe that their survey is valid, that it really measures telehome care satisfaction. What's next? They run some checks to see that the survey will accurately measure telehome care satisfaction time and time again. They give the survey to 60 patients on telehome care and then they run a statistical test called the Cronbach Alpha. That test tells them if the items on the survey relate to telehome care satisfaction. If the result of the alpha is more than 0 0.70, it means the survey is quite reliable. They may also give this survey to 60 patients, let's say on October the 1st, and then again on October 23rd. The score should be similar. Telehome care satisfaction is not likely to change over the course of a few weeks. This kind of test is called a test-retest study. And again, if the results are greater than 0 0.70, this is more evidence for the reliability of the survey. This means the survey is reliable. Researchers can count on it to deliver sensible results time and time again. There's other tests for reliability that can be done, but this is enough for now. Here's one more quick example. Let's say that nurse researchers develop a dietary teaching tool for their diabetes outpatient clinic. They really believe the tool will help their patients learn to eat better. They try the tool for one month with 40 patients. At the end of that month, they draw blood sugars on all their patients, and they're really surprised to see that the glucometer results have not really improved. They conclude that their new teaching strategy must not be that effective. But wait, is it the teaching tool that's at fault? One of the researchers checks the clinic's glucometer against a glucometer that is known to be accurate, and sure enough, the study glucometer is giving false results. It's unreliable. 
Just one inaccurate tool led to erroneous data and faulty study results. Pretty severe consequences. So just a quick summary now. Why do researchers go to all that trouble of developing, let's say, the telehome care survey or checking the glucometer before they start a study? Because all their data collection and study results hinge on the instruments they use. If the survey doesn't measure telehome care satisfaction, or if the glucometer reports the wrong blood sugar um, for one patient and then the right blood sugar for the next patient, then the results of the study are going to be wrong. And once the study is done, it's done. It takes a lot of money and a lot of work to go back and start again. That's something that everyone wants to avoid. What does it mean to you as a research reader? It means that you should look for evidence in an article that the researchers have taken steps to enhance the validity and the reliability of their tools. Look for statements such as, this survey has been tested and used in earlier studies, or the survey was given to five pediatric nurse clinicians to validate, or the Cronbach Alpha for the pain survey was 0.82. Those types of statements indicate that researchers were concerned enough to make sure their instruments were going to do the job of data collection well. And that's really important because, as you know, if you don't follow a tried and true recipe, or if you work with a faulty oven, how can the dinner come out well? One final point, reliability and validity are concepts that apply only to quantitative studies. Qualitative researchers have their own strategies for making sure they collect high quality data, but that's a topic for another video. Thank you.